Okay, so the next section is going to be the brain and the cranial nerves. So I'm sure everybody knows what the brain is. The cranial nerves are the nerves that emerge from the brain itself, as opposed to the spinal nerves that are emerging from the spinal cord. So the major regions of the brain, you've got the cerebrum in pink. That's kind of the big top to your brain. Dead center in the middle, you have the diencephalon. This is going to include things like your pituitary gland and your hypothalamus and your thalamus and the epithalamus and the subthalamus. Um, the midbrain is just this lavender portion right here. And then um, the pons and the medulla oblongata. These three things consist of the brain stem, okay? And then back here, You've got the cerebellum, which literally translated, I believe, means little brain, okay? As you can see, that medulla oblongata is actually continuous with our spinal cord, okay? So a mid-sagittally cut brain. You can still see the cerebrum, the cerebellum. You can see the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata making the brain stem. Um, so dead center, that diencephalon, this little thing right here, you can see the thalamus, the hypothalamus, this little thing dangling down here, that's actually the pituitary. This right here, the corpus callosum, is a major connection between the two hemispheres of the brain. You have to remember that in order for communication to happen with the different parts of your brain, there have to be pathways for that to happen. And these pathways are actually made out of that nervous tissue. Um, when it comes to the gray matter in the brain, a lot of that is going to be the thinking part, the decision-making part, things like that. The white matter, the myelinated portion, is actually primarily highways, carrying information from point A to point B. Um, in your spinal cord, if you'll remember, you had the gray matter dead center with the butterfly, and the white matter was surrounding that as the columns. With your brain, it's pretty much exactly opposite. The core, most of the core of your brain is going to be white matter, just carrying information. The outer covering, the cerebrum of your brain is actually gray matter. So that's a real human brain. Let's look at the pretty hand-drawn picture. Okay, so still the cerebrum, right? You've got um, that corpus callosum, you have the cingulate gyrus. See how this is just kind of one big piece of tissue? You also have something called the central sulcus. The central sulcus is a fold, sulcus is fold, by the way, that actually separates two really important gyrus, gyrus being the actual solid portion, not the fold. Okay, you've got a pre-central gyrus and a post-central gyrus. You also have the parietal lobe. So think about the bones of the skull. You had the frontal bone, you had the parietal bones, you had the occipital bones, right? And the temporal. So the parietal lobes are right here, right where your parietal bone would be. Okay, the frontal lobe, again, it's right in the front where it would be. Here's the thalamus, okay? See this right here? This is actually called the interthalamic adhesion. Inter in between the lamic, the thalamus, adhesion, because it adheres the two halves together. Um, the space that you have here is actually what we call the third ventricle. It's one of the places where we have cerebral spinal fluid flowing. Um, here is my hypothalamus. And if you come down, see this little dangly bit? This is the pituitary gland. Underneath here is that mammillary body. Um, 
the temporal lobe, temporal bone, temporal lobe on the side. Now, brain stem, midbrain, pons, medulla oblongata, brain stem. Coming this direction, the parieto occipital lobe is kind of the, the connecting portion, or I'm sorry, parieto occipital sulcus is the connecting portion between the parietal lobe up here and the occipital lobe back here of your um, cerebrum. Back here, you have the habenula, which is basically one of the parts of the diencephalon, the pineal gland, which is back here, and these two consist or make up the epithalamus. So the habenula is a part of the brain that associates smells with memories. So if you think about it, let's say, for example, me, my mom wears the same perfume that she's worn since, gosh, probably since I was about 14 years old. She wears white diamonds. So when I smell white diamonds, I think of my mom. The memory, that, that connection between white diamonds and my mom is an emotional memory. That's one of the things that the epithalamus does. It connects smells to memories. I'm sorry, the epithalamus, the habanula. The pineal gland is... Um, Unknown, we talked about this in lecture, but the pineal gland in animals actually controls their sleep-wake cycle. So if you're working with animals, let's say in a lab setting, one of the things that you do when you know you're gonna be working with them is you turn on the lights because most animals are nocturnal, meaning that when the lights go on, they're more docile because they think it's time to sleep. We don't really do that. If we did, then we would really be upset when we went to a movie theater, watch the movies and the lights went down. We, that would be bad, right? So what we do know for sure about the pineal gland is that when you get a tumor on it, you either go into puberty very, very early or you don't go into puberty at all. So they think it has something to do with the onset of puberty. They also know that it has something to do with releasing melatonin, which does actually help with controlling sleep. Anyway, so that's the pineal gland, okay? The posterior commissure, the cerebral aqueduct, which basically is going to be um, the connecting tube, which you'll see better in another picture to the fourth ventricle, which is another space where that cerebral spinal fluid is. And then this is the cerebellum back here. So, yeah. Here is our diencephalon and our brainstem. I want you to notice that there's the two halves here of the thalamus. So left and right, remember that interthalamic adhesion that I told you about, that little stick right there? Here it is holding these two halves together, that interthalamic adhesion. The infundibulum is this little piece down here. The cerebral penduncle is here, okay? Now, when you get to the infundibulum and the cerebral penduncle, now we're talking brainstem. We're talking about the midbrain. The midbrain is actually the smallest part of your brainstem. Here it is, the cerebral penduncle. And back here, you've got the superior colliculus and the inferior colliculus, these two lumps that are on the posterior side of the midbrain. Now, these are essential for reflex action when you see a flashing light or you hear a crash somewhere. You know that... <gasps> What is that, right? That's a reflex action to turn and see what's going on. One of the reasons why ambulances not only have sirens but have flashing lights is because our reflex action is to look and see what's going on. So that's in the midbrain. There's that pineal gland, again, um, part of the diencephalon. Um, below that, you've got the pons. Now, the pons, to me anyway, always looks like two nalgas, okay? When you look at the picture, that's what it reminds me of. But the pons actually has 
um, an important respiratory center that helps us to um, control our respiration. Um, and in the back of the ponds and the medulla oblongata, which is down here, um, we have these connectors, the cerebellar penduncles, superior, middle, and inferior, that connect our brain stem to, um, well, connect our cerebellum, I should say, to different parts of the brain stem. Um, excuse me. Sorry, I just had lunch. Um, anyway, you've got the median sulcus. Remember, sulcus kind of means groove. Um, the nucleus cutaneous, the nucleus gracilis, I'm sorry, gracilis, and the olive. I was like, that isn't it. See that lump right there? That's the olive, okay, in the medulla oblongata. Also in the medulla oblongata, you've got this pyramid area. So control of muscles. You've got these descending tracks coming down from your brain to control your body. The thing is, as they come down, they basically cross, <laughs> I guess. Um, which if you want to be fancy about it, you can say they desuscate. But what that means is your opposite side of your brain controls the side of your body opposite to it. So your, if you have a friend or you have a parent or a grandparent who's ever had a stroke, whatever side that stroke was on, the right side, let's say, it's the left side of their body that will be greatly affected. If it's the left side of the brain that they have the stroke on, it's the right side. And one of the reasons is because these pathways for motor activities for controlling your body actually cross over at the pyramids here. Um, so yeah, I think that's everything. Now looking at the cerebellum, that mini brain in the back, if you look, you can see something that kind of looks like a tree. You've got the trunk and the branches coming out. That tree is actually called the arbor vitae. If you look at the color here, notice that the tree is lighter than the leaves. And that is exactly what I was talking about previously, that this is the white matter and the folia or the leaves out here are actually going to be the gray matter. Um, this is one lateral hemisphere. If we go back, you'll notice that you have two of these. You've got one on one side, one on the other side. So calling it a lateral hemisphere makes sense because you have two sides to this. Um, the vermis are kind of the folds that you see. The folia are the ridges. Um, the posterior lobe, the back, <clears throat> excuse me, and of course the brain stem, you've got the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. Oh, and the floculonodular, there we go, lobe is kind of in the middle here, okay? Remember those penduncles I was talking about earlier, the superior, um, middle, and inferior, right? They are actually responsible for allowing communication between the cerebellum and the different parts of my brainstem. Just like their location, midbrain is at the top, pons is in the middle, medulla oblongata is at the bottom, right? So the superior cerebellar penduncle attaches my um, cerebellum to my midbrain. The middle cerebellar penduncle attaches my um, cerebellum to my pons. The inferior cerebellar penduncle attaches my cerebellum to my medulla oblongata. These are my lines of communication. Remember I said white matter is like a highway carrying information. That's what it's doing. <clears throat> so looking at it from the top, remember I said lateral hemispheres. Well, this is a whole medulla oblongata, and you can see I've got a left and I've got a right. The folia are the folds that you are seeing. This is looking from the top down, okay? 
So you've got the anterior lobe, the one toward the front of the body. See that big old groove right here? This is the posterior lobe. You've got one toward the front, toward your eyeballs, and one toward the back, toward well, your back. The vermis right here is actually the connecting point between the two lateral hemispheres, okay? Now, this is inferior, so you're looking at the underside of the cerebellum. <clears throat> Again, that vermis is still there, that connecting point between the two hemispheres, two lateral hemispheres. In this case, um, you've got the left and the right because you're looking at it from underneath. Um, you've got the anterior lobe still. See that kind of enfolded lobe here, not this one up here, but kind of it's behind it. That's the floccula nodular lobe, okay? Um, you still have the posterior lobe back here, anterior lobe up here. Now, the diencephalon, going back, that thing right there in kind of a mid, well, a fluorescent green, that's what we're looking at. It's just isolated in the picture. Okay, mid sagittally, I have my thalamus. There's that interthalamic adhesion, that sticking point in the middle that I was talking about. If I were to take just the thalamus out, it would look kind of like this. It almost looks like a mini brain. Okay, and that interthalamic adhesion, that kind of cut off stump that we see here is actually that piece right there that is holding these two um, lobes together. Just like here, we have the lateral hemisphere. Here, we've kind of got the same thing. We've got two lateral hemispheres, okay? And the thalamus itself actually does have different sections. You've got the medial nucleus, the lateral posterior nucleus, the pulvinar, which is that area there, the lateral geniculate nucleus, um, the lateral dorsal nucleus. This lighter green is the ventral lateral nucleus. This orange is the ventral anterior nucleus. And the red is the anterior nucleus. So you have different parts. And actually, all of these different parts do different things. Now, that's up here. Down here, below it, you have the subthalamus. Back here, you've got the epithalamus with that habanula that is the um, smell to memory, the pineal gland, which is right there, okay? Um, and then when you go past that to where it looks like there are skittles, that is actually the hypothalamus which is blown up right here. And again, each one of those skittles represents a different piece or part. Now remember the mammillary body, we mentioned that before, it's right there. The posterior nucleus, the lateral area, the paraventricular nucleus, the preoptic area, the anterior nucleus, the supraoptic nucleus, the um, ventromedial nucleus, the arcuate nucleus. You even have the super chi um, chiasmatic nucleus here. Um, the optic chiasm is actually, and I'll show it to you when we're looking at the um, optic nerve, but the optic nerves come in and actually kind of merge. That's the optic chiasm. And again, I'll show it to you in just a bit but it's there, you can see it in this picture. Now, this little dangly thing right here, this is the pituitary gland, and you can see it here. Remember the cella tersica from the skull? It looked like a little saddle that a monito would sit in? That's actually where that pituitary sits. It's inside of that little piece of the skull. Okay, so looking at the cerebrum, 
Remember I said there's a fold that kind of um, divides the, the brain, right? That's right here. That's that central sulcus. And right in front of it is the precentral gyrus. Right behind it is the postcentral gyrus. These actually carry sensory information for one of them, and the other is motor information for voluntary movements. The sulci are the actual grooves that you have. The gyri are the upraised portions that are the folds, okay? Looking at the brain, this is as if you're looking down, okay, from on top, like you're looking down at somebody's brain. You've got the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, and the occipital lobe. Again, think of the bones of the skull. It's the same thing. Your frontal bone's up here, your parietal bone's back here, your occipital is here. Dead center in the middle of your brain, you have a huge fissure. Remember, there's fissures are deep cracks. This is the longitudinal fissure because it goes all the way along the two um, hemispheres of your cerebrum, right hemisphere, left hemisphere, okay? Looking at it from the side, instead of being mid-sagittally cut, now it's intact. Here is that central sulcus, right? So the fold before it is the pre-central gyrus. The fold right after is the post-central gyrus. Again, frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe. Now, the one that we couldn't see before was the temporal lobe, which is right here. Again, temporal bone, temporal lobe. This fissure along the side is called the lateral fissure. Again, makes sense, lateral the side. Um, and then you've got your cerebellum down here, okay? So remember I told you that with your brain, it's different. The inside is white matter, the outside is gray matter. So if you look at this picture, see all of this that's kind of the lighter color? This is all white matter. The core of your brain, for the most part, not all of it, but for the most part is white matter. These little bundles here are gray matter, but in your brain, we call them nuclei. This is where cells meet up with other cells. This is where communication is happening like that. So these dark gray matter areas in the core of your brain are called nuclei. Notice that the outer edge here is all darker than the inside. That's because this is the gray matter. Now admitted, the nuclei are made from gray or made out of gray matter, but these, or this, I should say, rimming the outside of your cerebrum is also all gray matter. It's one of the reasons why if there's an open head wound, a lot of times they talk about being able to see gray matter. Because if you can see the top of the brain, if you can see any part of the brain, as long as it's not obliterated, it's going to be the gray matter that you will see. Now, remember I said that with the white matter, they're highways for communication, right? Okay. See the blue here. These are actually commissural fibers. Remember we talked about in the spinal cord um, lecture, the gray commissure where it attached the two wings to each other. In this case, the commissural fibers are attaching the two hemispheres, the left and right hemispheres of the cerebrum to each other. So if I need information to get from this side to this side, this is the highway that I take, the commissural fibers. Now, the biggest concentration of these that we have is the corpus callosum. Now, going back, the corpus callosum is this thing here. This is where those fibers are going from this hemisphere to this hemisphere out here. Okay, now we also have these little red fibers here, okay? 
So these fibers are called association fibers. Association fibers are basically like going to your neighbor's house. So within the same hemisphere, you also have little highways to connect parts of that hemisphere to the same hemisphere. So maybe I wanna go from here to here. That highway that I would use is called an association fiber. So that's what the red are. Now, the green, you'll notice that those go from up here, down here, yes? These are also white um, matter tracks that are called, um, where are you? Projection fiber, projection fibers, okay? So projection fibers, again, are highways for information to take, but they're taking that information from the cerebrum up here to different parts of the brain, whether that is to the midbrain or the um, thymus and the diencephalon or the medulla oblongata way deep down into the um, brainstem or to the cerebellum. Projection fibers are the ones that actually carry information to different places, okay? Not just from one hemisphere to the next, not just within the same hemisphere, but literally to other structures in the brain than the cerebrum. Okay. Ha, da, da. Ah, so I said this before, um, You'll hear two terms over and over, and they always mean the same thing. Medulla means middle, um, cortex means the outside. So when we talk about the internal portion of the cerebrum, we call it the medulla. This out here, that gray matter on the outside, that's the cortex, okay? Um, so you've got the cerebral medulla, you've got the cerebral cortex, outside, inside. Now, internally, you also have a few other structures that form the basal nuclei. Now, remember, I said the gray matter here is called the nuclei, right? So what we're about to look at is actually these two nuclei here. Well, I guess you could call them four, but um, this is what we're looking at here, okay? So with the basal nuclei, You've got the lentiform nucleus, kind of looks like a bean, right? So a lentil. Then you've got this kind of ram's horn looking thing here called the caudate nucleus. Together, these two form the corpus stratum. Now, up here are these two really huge nuclei. Right below it is the subthalamic nucleus, okay? And then down here is the substantia nigra. This is actually part of the midbrain, okay? So the amygdala is right here. The thalamus would be in this area here. So the amygdala is actually a part of the brain that's part of our emotional brain. This is the part of the brain that has our self-preservation. This is the part of the brain that actually makes us stop and go, is this a good idea? Is this not a good idea? Okay. So we're going to stop there and I'll start with part two in a second. <laughs>